to uh, I'll do a, just a quick review. If there are any questions, what we've done so far. I'm going to hand out a worksheet. This is not a work for grade. I'm going to do this all the time in this course. Just for you to practice. Take about 10, 15 minutes. Work with each other. I'll wander around. Make sure you're solid in what we've done so far. And then I will uh, push ahead to the next section. Okay. I've spent a lot of time laying the groundwork, so I'm hoping it goes pretty fast after this. So, and uh, I have an extra special treat for you, too. I'm not going to tell you. So first, any questions? Are you ready to take off the trading wheels and do a confidence interval on your own? Uh, can I get clarification on the symbol where it's uh, E equals Z to the uh, something over 2? Uh, no. uh, alpha. alpha. E equals Z sub alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of N. Is that? Ah, uh, yes, sir. So it's right here? Yes, sir. Okay. That's the formula for the margin of error. It's the margin of error for a confidence interval for a mean. You only know a sigma. It all starts out with your confidence level. That's going to be given to you as a percentage. 99%, 95%, 90%. Alpha is 1 minus the confidence level expressed as a decimal. So we're going to say it's 95%. 1 minus 0 0.95, 0.05. So calculate your alpha and divide it by 2. Now, what does that mean? That means in this confidence interval that we're going to create, the level is 95%. So right out of the middle of the distribution, I'm cutting out 95%. And what's left goes evenly in each tail. So that's 0 0.025 or alpha over 2. That's 0 0.025 or alpha over 2. And that's 95%. I'll stick to decimals here, that's 0.95. So that's my rationale so far. And now what I need to know is what's that Z value? What is Z sub 0 0.025 equal to? Oh, okay. What is this Z value equal to? And I get that using inverse form. Okay. All right? Yes, sir. All right, let's take 10 minutes and see how far we can get in this, all right? And again, work together, make noise. I don't care as long as you're doing statistics. And I'll be wandering around. And this should enable you to start 7-3 in the homework. So you be part of 7-1 already. those steps. Don't skip any, at least certain not to begin with. Uh, go through the steps, I guarantee you'll be successful. Right. You might need to push a few things that I realized that were confusing. I'm going to use the recipe and go right through it. Uh, parameters of mu. And in this case, it's a mean what, red blood cell count? Red. That's what I'm studying. My confidence level is 99%, so that means alpha is 0 .0, 0 0.01. Alpha over 2 is 0 0.005. Stop me if I'm getting a place where you're not familiar, all right? First few things you do. Now get that done. 
read the problem. Every number in that paragraph deserves a symbol. Make sure you know what that number means. So there's some other numbers lying around there. What are they? What symbols should we give them? Well, there's an X bar. What is that equal to? 4.63. 4.63. That's millions of cells per microliter or something like that. That's my X bar. Okay, there's some other numbers there. What else do we have? 0.54. What is 0.54? Sigma. That's a sigma. That's we're told that is a population standard deviation. The next kind of problem we're going to do with you, that will be we'll instead of a case where we don't know a sigma, but we know an S instead. And my other thing I know is N is equal to 50, right? That's my sample size. Now at this point, we pause and reflect, have I satisfied the requirements? Can I go further? Well, my requirements are either I'm sampling from a normal distribution, or else my sample size is greater than 50, or greater than 30, or both of those. Sample size is 50, so I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about anything else. So I've met the requirements. I can find the confidence interval. The formula that I have for my margin of error is E is equal to Z alpha over 2 sigma over the square root of N. Well, what do I know so far? I know my sigma. Got that right here. I know what n is. That's 50. So what's missing? It's about over 2. Let's figure that out. If it helps, draw a picture. I've got 99% confidence and also there's 0.99 probability in the middle and alpha over 2 on each end. So the next step was, let's find this z sub alpha over 2. In this case, it's z sub point. Zero, zero, 005. Uh, now, I hope you brought up good questions. I'm going to use inverse norm. Inverse norm, you know, the, the quickest way, the easy way, inverse norm 0 0.005. Go ahead and do that. You get a negative number, don't you? You get negative what, 2.57. The normal distribution is symmetric, so if this critical value is negative 2.57, what's this one? 2.57. Now I have my missing piece. That is the z sub alpha over 2. Now it can be confusing. I've seen some people say, oh, I get z sub alpha, then I divide by 2. No, no. Say it fast. It's z sub alpha over 2. Calculate it, alpha over 2 is 0 0.005. Don't need to do anything else. 2.57. All right, you've done that calculation. And that is equal to what? That's my margin of error. It would be in units of the problem, millions of blood cells per microliter. All right, it's confidence interval is E, it's X bar minus E, X bar plus E. X bar is 4.63. E is 0.197. And when you do that arithmetic, what do you get for their final answer? 4.43. 4.43. 
my parameter, I'm studying a mu. So 4.43 less than or equal to mu is less than or equal to 4.83. And my sentence would be something like the following. I am 99% confident that the true, that the interval 4.43 to 4.83 contains the true mean red blood cell count. Now the, the answers are on the back of your sheet. They might be off a little bit by rounding here. 4.8. Yeah, they're close. Let's pause here. Any questions on that part of it? Silence is stunning here. All right, the next question was to calculate a value for n, the sample size. And uh, <coughs> It, what, we wanted a margin of error of 0.5, is that it? So now we're going to turn the question around. I want my margin of error, the margin of error of my 99% confidence interval. So you can't, you've got to remember the confidence level. That's important. My margin of error for my 99% confidence interval to be no more than 0 0.5. 0 0.5 for a confidence level equal 99%. Well, we've got a formula for that. And there it is, right there. N is equal to, C sub alpha over 2, well, that hasn't changed. That was 2.57. Times uh, sigma. Help me out here. What was sigma? Point five four. Point five four. And when you do that, what do you get for n? Seven point seven. And in these cases, we always round up. You can't have a random sample of 7.7 people, so the answer would be 8. All right, let me uh, show you something that might help here. For those of you that have the laptop open, can you get to the T drive? Can you check to see if you can do that? I believe you can. T drive and then under math and look for mining and then stat videos. Galvest, can you get to the T drive? Do you know? Are they? Did they get to the T drive? I don't know that. I don't know what they're asking. I got to put these someplace where you can get to. Them. I'll put them up on the site, on the YouTube site. All right. Well, look. <coughs> there are a number of uh, screencasts out here, and I'll get you. In this kind of problem. We want to calculate a confidence interval for a mean in a special case where sigma, the population standard. Whoa, deja vu. 
Great voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of these screencasts for, for 106. So I'll, we'll, eventually they'll be up on YouTube, right? We're going to put them up on the OML site. So if you, you know, got that urge, 11 o'clock tonight, I want to hear that voice. <laughs> I want to do some math. You, you'll be hearing me again go through yeah. this. And I understand it might take two or three times, right? But you've got the opportunity. And I, I will do these for each kind of problem that we go over. number of them done already. All right, how are you feeling? A little bit, not sure yet? Better. Better? It's repetition, Ben, you know that. It's, this is, that's how you learn math. Just do the repetition. There's a lot of, there's homework problems out there, an angel problems in the back of the book that have answers. Just keep doing the reps. We've got an example of the worksheet. We've got the screencast. We have just gone over a confidence interval for a mean when I know sigma. Uh, between now and the following Friday when we have our exam, we're going to go through three more cases of confidence intervals. Three more. Let's do the next one right now. So, I'm now in 7.3 in the book. We've covered most of 7.1. And then I'm going to jump back to 7.2. There, there's a method to my madness. I hope it works. Okay. Here's the situation. We're still interested in a me, a mu. That's our parameter that we want to study. So that hasn't changed. We're going to change one assumption, and it's an important assumption. What we've done so far, we said, oh, we know sigma, the population standard deviation. Well, you know what? That's hardly ever the case. Hardly ever. It's much more likely that you don't know sigma and you have to estimate sigma with S. Now, here's where the alphabet soup comes in. It's important that you know your terminology. S is the sample standard deviation, S. You know S, not sigma. Well, gee, couldn't I just do this? That's the formula for the margin of error. You kind of probably just did. I would just put in an S instead of sigma, right? Makes sense? Well, it makes sense, but it's not right mathematically. I have to change something. And it doesn't quite work because when you deep, get deep down into the mathematics, this is no longer a Z distribution. It's no longer a Z random variable. But don't worry. We know what it is. It's just not a Z. It's a T. Yeah. Students T distribution. So now I'm going to take a little bit aside here and talk about our second continuous probability distribution, the T distribution. Got Z's and now we got T's. <coughs> it turns out if I look at that uh, statistic, X bar minus mu, and I divide it by S instead of a sigma, and S instead of sigma, I do get a random variable, and we do know its probability distribution. It's a student T distribution. And one thing that's different about a student T distribution, it has a parameter, just one parameter, it's called degrees of freedom. And that's always the sample size minus one. When we talked about normal distributions in general, I had to give you two parameters, didn't I? A mean and a standard deviation. When I'm talking about a Z distribution, you know that the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. We know that. It's a Z. All right, with the T distribution, you have to specify just one parameter, and that's the degrees of freedom, or N minus 1. The Z, the T distribution is pretty close to a Z distribution. They're both 
symmetric about zero. They're both, uh, they both have a mean of zero. And what you see happens as my n gets larger, remember n minus one is the degrees of freedom. As n gets larger, my t distribution gets closer and closer and closer to a z. So you can think of the t distribution as my correction to the z because I don't know sigma, I just know s. So I'm doing my estimate with another estimate. I've got x bar and s. I've got two estimates in there. t distribution. And now I go back to my formula for the margin of error, and that does look really similar, doesn't it? I've changed one letter. It's not a z sub alpha over two, it's a t sub alpha over two. I just have to switch my probability distribution. And all the other things we've done works. Every step that we've done before, same step, one exception. When you find those critical values, get them from a t distribution, not a z distribution. And to calculate the confidence interval, x bar minus e, x bar plus e. Same drill. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, uh, here's where you need your calculators, and hopefully most of you have a TI-84. Does anybody not have an 84? All right. Well, this is where I have to divide this class. For those of you that have a TI-84, if you go to second bars, and down at number four option, you will see inverse t. Works just like the inverse z function with one exception. You need to provide not only the area to the left, but the degrees of freedom. So for my calculator folks here, Suppose my degrees of freedom is 20, and I had 0.05 probability there, and I want to know the t random variable that has 0.05 probability to the right when the degrees of freedom is 20. And in your calculator, it would be inverse t, area to the left, 0.95, and then degrees of freedom, 20. Punch that in and tell me what you get. 0.7. I don't have that memorized. Agree? All right. So you're ready to go now to calculate confidence intervals for a mean when you know an S instead of a sigma. Now, let me address the rest of the class. Those that have a TI-83, you're going to need your formula sheets. You have those with you. Yeah, I think it's table, I need to see a table. I think it's a table A4, is it? Who am I talking to now? Raise your hand. One, two, all right. You have your formula sheets? Oh, you, you have to have the, you need the 106 version. It has a lot more to it. Okay, did that MIDCO have it? It's prepared. The voice staff? No, 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 sir. I have actually skipped this one. Table A3. All right, the people that have TI-83s, eyes here, please, for a minute. 
you will be using table A3. Unless you get your hands on the TI84. On table A3, it says T distribution, critical T values. The column down here, the first column has the degrees of freedom. So in this case, we said it's 20. You go down to the row where there's a 20. Then you read across the other columns, say area in one tail or area in two tails. Well, I said one tail, area 0.05. So at Nitco, would you read off? Go down to 20. Yeah. And area in one tail, 0.05, and what do you see? Um, 1.725. There you go. All right, that. <clears throat> That might be a little bit mysterious to you the first time, but make sure you bring your formula sheets and tables. You're going to have to have them. All right, I'll do one example here. And then I'll hand out a worksheet. And I made this one real easy. We just, I'm giving you the numbers. I have an X bar, an N, and an S. And let's construct, let's construct a 95% confidence interval of these are weights of N using a student T distribution. So what's my point estimate? Okay. Pain? Gotcha. What's my point estimate? .55. X bar is your point estimate when you're studying a mean. Got it? Nice recovery. Sample size is 40. Am I using a Z or a T distribution here? T. Because? S. I know an S. Not a sigma. How many degrees of freedom? 39. 39 degrees of freedom. N minus 1. Formula for the confidence interval doesn't change. It's x bar minus e, x bar plus e. All right, we've got x bar. We know what that is already. 172.55. Now I need to know what e is. Well, e is equal to t sub alpha over 2, s over the square root of m. Formula looks familiar, doesn't it? Now I've got S instead of a sigma, T instead of a Z. All right. It is a 95% confidence interval, so I've got 0.95 in the middle. That means I have 0.025 in the tails. And this is a T distribution and the degrees of freedom would be 39. All right, you folks with the TI calculator, the 84s, find the T critical value. 2.02. Yeah. That's my T critical value. And now I've got everything I need to know to find my margin of error, don't I? 2.02. S uh, is 26. Let's go to 40. And you plug in chug and you get 8.316. Mm -hmm. I did not get 2.02. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, it was 0.95 and 39, right? You would or put in... 0.025, right? For the area? You could, and you'd get a negative number. Or, and 39. Okay, yeah, I got it. Got it? All right. Oh, and also, where do you get can you degree of freedom? Can you say where you get that again? N minus 1. Oh, N minus Okay, N minus 1. Degrees of freedom, N minus 1. 
So now my confidence interval, I do it the same way. It's x bar minus e, x bar plus e. There's my inequality. And there's my sentence. I'm 95% confident that the mean weight of men, of the adult male, is between 164.23 and 180.866. All right, I'm going to give you another worksheet. These prepare you for the homework problems. The answers are in the back. Spend some time with this because Friday, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do yet another kind of conference symbol. We're going to go to proportions. And the Monday will be standard deviations. 